Do you guys know that uh, it was not so? Uh, he did not get into music by design, which is an unbelievable, but not really first um, used to read horses in the US. Yeah. <laughs> uh, later on, he sold carpets. He even worked on a point with me at Pondicherry. Notice, nothing related to music. The music didn't happen by chance. Um, but, of course, hailing from a family of artists, uh, he was in constant touch with artists, singers, music directors, music directors and uh, various other artists, and it was actually during one of these interactions with the music world for And you would think that, and you would think it would be smooth sailing after that, right? But, no, round again. The legendary man, uh, the lucky his father, wanted his son to do something on his own, not necessarily follow him in his footsteps. So, um, so there was a time when he was frustrated and I was told that he said that this is it for music and I'm not going to do anything. But luckily for all of us, for the second day of he came back to music and he became what he did and he's here to us today to uh, hopefully talk about his experience. Uh, and then uh, some statistics, his first music album that I also know was released in 1996. Not only did it uh, do well to sell over four like four and like copies, but it also established him as a pop singer and had a preference to start it. The album won several awards, including Best Pop Male Vocalist of the 1996 Screen Awards and the Channel V Viewers Choice Award in 1997. Um, the album even stayed on the MTV Asia charts for uh, over 60 weeks. So, um, he also made it big as a... Sorry, I think there's some problem with my... Is that good now? Yeah. All right. Yeah, he also made a big a playback single with his first uh, first foray into the films. His uh, Come On Up Yak is uh, the new effort and it won him the first Filmfare Award for the best uh, male playback single. So I guess I could go on and on with it, right? But I'm sure you all are waiting to hear from him and not from me, so I'm not going to uh, stand here any longer. So with this, I want to welcome once again to the film. Good evening, everyone. Music for me is a hobby, a serious hobby. It pays me, that's a different thing. But, um, it's not something I look on as a career, as a profession. I do many other things uh, apart from music. Uh, agriculture, I like agriculture, I like working with land, um, I like building things. Uh, so I have, uh, and I like food, um, and I like to make money, also, <laughs> in all of this. What's important um, to me is um, responsible commercialism. What I mean by that is being responsible. It's not about only making the money, the buck. It's also about giving back. And um, when you take, you know, the, uh, the person in front, when you give back, you get. It's only giving that you receive. And in my experience, I mean, I've gone through the whole um, rut of working with corporate companies, the Sonys and the PMGs and the T series and etc. 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 And I realized one thing that um, uh, there's a dissatisfaction that one felt as an individual working with these companies. First of all, I felt like I felt, I felt like a servant. And I don't want to be anybody's servant. I want to be free. I want to make my own go. I'm putting that very um, in a in a general kind of a way, not in a demeaning sense. So please get the meaning of what I'm saying rather than the words of that. Um, I realized uh, that uh, as an artist, I have a, a lifespan of, say, that many years in which I have, I can put together all my ideas and get it across and you know, express myself through whatever medium. I've done cinema, I've done uh, uh, music, sometimes I talk like this, I mean, talk to people on an individual basis or to the press. and. Uh, I realized that, man, I'm going nowhere. I could be making 
a big name, maybe a lot of money and a lot of concerts. And it's all about this money thing, you know, you, you just making a lot of money and uh, you're buying the best cars and the best bikes and it's about that. And actually it's not about that. At the end of the day, uh, Nano is also suitable. Or, you know, if you go to figure it out. What's important is being responsible for um, um, whatever you're doing. Whether you're a corporate company, you hire, you have, you hire an artist. Uh, you give to the artist what you're supposed to give to the artist. You give to the public what you're supposed to give to the public. And it's... So those are principles like I, I think I... I, I uh, Change, change things for me. I started my own brand. I started calling it Surplus uh, uh, Company Surplus 2. We started with Label Lucky Ali Entertainment, not for any other reason, but so that I could spread my music. And I did it through using the technology, the real good technology. For five years, I sat down and I just made music and decided that I'm not going to sign up with any company. I'm just going to find my way. And I'm going to see how others have done it. So you keep your ears open, your eyes open, the new emerging technologies that are uh, different methodologies of marketing your, your product, if you want to call it that. Of course, as a musician, I want my music to be heard by everybody. So I wanted to go, I mean, as easily to the next person. You know, if I give it to you for free, you take it, right? If you just take it. So that's what I did. I put it on the net for free. I said, just go and download it. The net also has a limitation, you know, you can, it, like for in sound quality work, um, you, you do 3, 320 kbps, that's the best quality you get off the net. But uh, physical media, for example, again, um, uh, the, uh, the quality of the physical media becomes more enhanced. But you want to be responsible because you don't want to have too much of plastic moving around. So you want less of that plastic and more of the experience, it, it, it has to be balanced. So uh, we derived the methodology where we um, spread our music on the net, anybody can buy it. And yet there are people who come to concerts because that's not, you can't replicate a concert. So we said instead of people taking a, um, a billet or, or, or a ticket back home, we give them a CD. So you responsibly just do that many CDs, whether it's 5,000 or 50,000 or 80,000 or eight people. And as long as those are the people who listen to your music generally and you know, so you just so we realize that we killed piracy for our product at least, you know. There was no piracy for us. I mean, you just go and um, download music, you know, you pay 40, 50 bucks to uh, um, uh, get something that you can get free. So, and I think a lot of music companies got a bit mad at me because I went and said that um, because I felt betrayed by um, these uh, music companies. You know, we were we started a trend uh, in the in the 90s, which really went on for a. Um, I mean, it had its own role. And then we realized that uh, by the companies wanted to make more and more and more money, so they were buying film music at obscene prices and leveling the the losses against the profits that the non-film uh, uh, you know place was making, the music that was non-film was actually making money. It was making money for the company and was making... But they had to balance that. I mean, you pay 8 crores for that film or... How do you balance that out? This cinema has got a limited, uh, what you call uh, this thing, whereas music has got a timeless kind of thing. If it's good, it's going to remain. But anyways, not complaining that things are wrong and things are bad and this one's right and this one's wrong. The idea is that uh, if... Uh, I think the change has to come from within. If you change and you decide that I want to work so that I'm satisfied and everybody else around me is satisfied, I think that's basically, that will bring about the energy, you know, uh, that you need to probably be successful or, uh, I don't know, be um, uh, peaceful or whatever. This is just uh, my philosophy, like, I don't want to like, uh, you know, if there are any questions that you want to ask me, I'm probably happy. What do you think? Like, it's a question everybody is 
Well, the platform is there. I think the, uh, a lot of people, um, um, singers especially. Uh, see, I come from a film family. So for me, uh, this is just a ghati path. Like, you know, I mean, it's ghati mudhi dal barabar. Right? I mean, that's saying. So it's not really uh, something that I pursued as such. Otherwise, I would have belonged. These are people who come from uh, uh, generally middle class families who uh, are learned, you know, who have the knowledge of uh, the talent that they portray to the rest of the world. And for that, they need to be suitably, you know, protected. I mean, that's talent that needs to be protected. But what happens in, the, uh, in uh, doing a, an album? You, you don't get your unfortunately, um, because the company needs to make all that money to pay all its employees and it does not consider the artist important. So the poor artist has to like then go on to uh, cinema and like you know try to find work in cinema and classic. You know, so he, he does a lot of work that he may not really want to do. So you need to uh, balance it out, I believe. There is a future for all kinds of music, I mean you call it pop music, for me it's just those seven notes and within that you've got to play your, uh, and you, it's infinite. You can find any connotation, any equation, whatever, and you can keep on changing, but it's within those seven notes. What gave you this most happiness in music, feeling, or being relaxed, or maybe able to give you what you want? I'm disaffected actually by the whole uh, like, I have my reality very, very clear in front of me. I know that this is ultimately what is to be, at least with my life. Uh, so these things, like whether it's the music or whether it's the agriculture, these are passing days and I want to enjoy it as a moment of joy. You know, I mean, it's not something that, uh, music is not something I, I, I live for. Music brings me closer to humanity probably, but it doesn't take me close to God. Prayer takes me close to God, you know. so. Knowing what things are and keeping them in the right perspective is probably how it is. So, do you think it would be it's practical for young people to even think of music as a career option as such? Because one part is like for a middle class family person you spoke about who's trying to pursue music, you can invest a lot of time in learning. It takes a lot of time and then you realize that then there's a lot of politics or as you say, people have other incentives to fill these to not pay musicians. So is that even a sustainable thing for people to consider music and wouldn't that affect the quality of music that comes about if people have to do this as a serious hobby? See, uh, you look at these things, I, I believe that you should look at um, these things unemotionally. There is a certain emotion in that. Um, uh, uh, the very fact that you can sing is bringing across an emotion. But you know you have to protect that. How do you protect that? You must have a job to take care of. You know your something that you love and something that you nurture. So you must protect that before um, uh, you know going and expressing it to the rest of the world and then becoming everything for you. I mean in terms of. People who have made careers in music and stuff like that have necessarily worked, I mean, uh, doing other things and, you know, surviving other ways. There's no madness in it. You know, there has to be practicality and uh, understanding of the environment that you're going, why are you going there? I would sing for love, just for the love of singing. And if that makes me happy, that's enough. I've got a nice job, I can do other things and make a lot of people happy. So this, this is this is like any time, so they show you this also I can download. So do you think this internet and the free downloading of music or hacking or whatever, so it has hampered the music industry and in time to come, we will see the erosion of such stores as Music World and such kinds. Definitely, for musicians, that's something like that has happened. Otherwise, the music company would control that. What has to be done, I believe, is it's a new era. There's a new uh, time that has happened. 
These five years have changed a lot of things. The world has gotten um, uh, very, very close. You can talk to anyone, you can share music. There's a lot of things that have happened. Um, now you cannot control that. Now can you control the internet? You cannot control the internet. So I think big corporations like who have a Guam music company should allow for their music to just go out free of cost to people. And it should be on, based on that, you know, that uh, whether your music is acceptable or if, whether your work is acceptable to people, then they come to listen to you. So uh, you also make a very, uh, the, the companies make a very, uh, what do you call it, educated decision about how they would progress with that artist. Or, you know, it's about those things. Uh, internet's a good thing, but it's not something that anybody can control. So the be better thing to do is to understand that and give it for what it is. And then find other avenues to monetize or uh, other avenues. Like for example, um, if I really want my CDs to go out, I, the only place I would rather have them go out is when I'm performing because the people who, who come to a concert have come to see my performance, my work. So that's the best way to like, without even imposing on them. You know, you uh, charge a person 700 bucks for a ticket, you know, and he, all he goes back with, you know, he or she goes back into the piece of paper, you know, and that day I could have had a very bad performance and they just say, well, what the heck happened, like, you know. So you've got to be fair, you've got to balance it out and give them back whatever I mean, you're taking from them. Sir, for any normal Indian... No, no, no. I'm just minusing out the, uh, the talent show that we are running on the TV. Yeah, apart from that. Anu Malik, when he wanted to be heard, he ran after this producer, this is a story, a very famous story. He ran after the producer, the producer was going to the toilet for a pee. And he said, please listen to my song. And then he wrote, oh, sorry, on, on the bathroom door. And he, you know, that was how he did it. But he needed that and he, and he went to that length. So that was really innovative. It was not out of, I mean, it was really out of the box. It was normally you would have to uh, you know, take an appointment with the producer, uh, with, 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 through his secretary or whatever, you know, the whole thing. But it was that important to him. So, necessity is the mother of invention. It was necessary for me to release this music because I had gone and spent a lot of money, I mean, getting the best musicians. I mean, I like to work with people, but at the same time, man, it's all coming out of my pocket, I will recover it. So, how do I do it? I go to find different, different methods that is not burdensome on anybody, and at the same time, it's easy also on me, you know, so... Uh, sir, good evening. Good evening. Uh, my question is regarding one of your uh, biggest hits. Uh, I mean, I want to ask, how do you prepare yourself mentally for that kind of success? Like, when Ikpalta Chuna happened, or when uh, Sur happened, then and how do you react to that, and how do you take that forward in your stride, and be humble enough, and uh, still give your best? How do you handle those kind of situations? Well, um, fortunately for me, whenever I've had a release of an album or a movie, I've run away from it. <laughs> uh, not for any other reason. Uh, just um, the burden of thinking of what's going to happen to that is very burdensome. You just leave it, let it go. And uh, uh, after a project, you normally feel, I mean, when you do a project, if you, even if you're making a product, at the end of it, you feel in your heart, ah, tha, tha. you get that. That energy comes, I mean, because of what, it depends on what you put into it, or what energies have gone into it, or whatever. And these things, I mean, it's this passing things, you know, I mean, uh, if you can understand that these are passing, so you have a 15 minutes of recognition, that's what it is, that two 15 minutes is when you got your award, that's it. After that, all the work that you'll do, everybody will say, but it's also numbers. You understand what I mean? You're known for that one thing that you you might have done the best of works. Like, I mean, Einstein would have written E is equal to MC square, and then he would have discovered something else. But that was what they remembered. So somewhere in your talk, you said that for four or five years, you're not going to the music companies. You were, you were releasing your music on the net. Yeah. Don't you agree that during that era, 
the net was limited by its reach. I mean, the customer penetration per se of the net was much lower. You wouldn't have been able to reach the masses. Yes, we faced that problem. What I've done was, I released an album called Ixui. Now, uh, within the space that I, I knew, or rather, um, within the Indian diaspora, I did not find anyone who would give me a solution for me to release my music. So I went through an American company called Nimbit. And I put my uh, uh, this thing, music on the net. Uh, what I realized was, uh, India has not really, uh, reached that critical mass that you want to call for an e-commerce thing to really take off. You know? Uh, but there is massive downloading that can happen, which is much more. Because see, people in India, unfortunately, uh, we're not that structured that everybody has a credit card, everybody has a... You understand, people don't. They are, have access to the net. Somehow they can get on to that through chat rooms or whatever, and they can download their stuff, and from some kind of thing, they'll put it on their phone, and that's their thoda pushy. So, we, re we realize that, anyways, uh, get to that point, uh, there was a pricing that uh, was happening from an American point of view, like you know, 99 cents per song per download, you know. 99 cents is like 45 bucks for a song. Right? That's too steep for even a, the common man, you know. So I realized that this is not a workable solution. The best thing, the way to use the net was to tell people like, listen man, I got this great album that's out, you know, but I want you to have it. Listen to it and tell me, give me your feedback. That, now that gives me a reason to make more music or find another job. <laughs> you understand what I mean? It gives me that, uh, that thing, a uh, number of people that have downloaded my my stuff, gives me a perspective and this is, I, uh, okay, take care, I, I should do this. Uh, I mean, it's making a lot of people happy, it's making me happy. But if I found that there was a minus, then you would say, here to do something. Anyways, which I'm anyways planning on, on doing. I'm uh, involving myself in some food business. I want everybody to have good Hyderabadi biryani, um, good Hyderabadi honey. So I want it, everybody knows that Hyderabad is known for us, this thing. And we are from Hyderabad, my, my grandmother's family from my father. So I want to celebrate it with uh, biryani everywhere that you go there. I hope that you see my lucky Hyderabadi whatever thing. Anyways, um, there's more to life than just what you're doing. You know, apart from if you have a job, there's still more to life. And another question, how did you find your passion in farming among you know, a, 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 a huge number of things, given that you, I, I'm, I'm not sure you had a background, of course, you know, like in agriculture or something of that sort, but how did you discover that passion? My father had this big farm outside Yadav. So, uh, it was a horse farm. We bred horses there. But the horses needed um, fodder. So we had a lot of land that needed to be planted and stuff. And I liked the idea, it was just in my early teens then. And the idea of getting onto a tractor and stuff like that, those things were forbidden, you know. And I could do that. And that gave me a lot of fun. You do it for hours and it was almost meditative. And um, uh, whether it was uh, tilling the fields through with a tractor or working with those people and just playing in the mud. So, uh, I realized, and then also, uh, I used to hear stories of, you know, India's rice is too classy no because of the amount of pesticides and uh, stuff that is used in its senses. So I started looking for alternatives. So I came across Masanobu Fukuoka, Japanese microbiologist, who um, de developed this one store revolution. He developed uh, the, the concept of no farm. You don't need to really farm to farm. You know, uh, you understand what you have in the soil. You don't release the nitrogen because when you put urea back, you're putting back nitrogen. You're unnecessarily digging the soil, releasing the nitrogen, then you're going to put, put, put it back. So why do you want to do that? Just don't do it. I mean, use the methodologies that have been ancient, you know, growing rice and stuff like that. That are common to us here in uh, our country. The foods that are common to us are very workable with those technologies. And those are simple, basic technologies. Not even to do... It's about taking care of yourself. You know, and that's my intention. I want to take care of my responsibilities, my children. I want to grow healthy food. I want to, you know, give them a healthy life if I can, you know. I don't want to get into that big space of like, you know, uh, 
because we've come from there. I see that and it's not real. I mean, it's a very lonely place. Success is a very lonely place. What do you grow? Well, uh, basically on our farm, I've grown anything from, uh, now it's not a farm anymore. Now it is being developed because the city's come all around my farm. So it, the city's come with its rats, its cockroaches, its, and it's taken away the workers. The workers don't want to work with uh, agriculture anymore. They want to get higher paid jobs and it's impractical to have that. So what we're doing is we're developing our uh, this thing and we buy farmland outside of Bangalore to continue with our. I have one question. Uh, being a child of successful and famous parents gives you some pluses, some minuses. Maybe people start comparing you and uh, that's a disadvantage side and on quality side maybe is it uh, a easy entry into this field. So what has been your experience? How it has worked for you? Actually, um, uh, it was not really very easy. My dad did it very difficult for me. <laughs> Just because to memu ke bete ho, don't think that ye ho sakta hai. Bus mein jao, gaadi mein le, 500 pe diya to saath dena. So, but that is, I think that was his way of uh, thing, and I think it worked for me. I mean, today, I believe that, Alhamdulillah, by my parents' prayers and blessings and their guidance, I've been able to achieve a certain um, uh, what do you call uh, standing within uh, a community that understands the kind of thing that probably I'm doing, with that music in this case. Um, so, I'm, um, it's, sometimes uh, people do try to make that comparison, oh, but my father's experiences were different, and um, uh, his environment was different, and values were different. It's more progressed since his time, you know? Now things, um, uh, I don't think uh, Osanam will be there 30, 40, 50 years from now, you know, or my albums or So these are things that, um, I mean, it's the important things, you have to do your bit and just don't place too much importance on it. Be a bit uh, disaffected, just be a bit, uh, what, what does she say, always detached, no what? She always says that. Why are you so detached, detached? But, but how do you get attached and then you can't kind of hold on to things that are um, not tangible. You know, it's basically the non-tangible things that you have to try to get attached. May I further that you had an alternate source of income. Uh, did you feel the passion enough that even if you didn't have an alternate source of income, you would have still driven yourself towards music? Oh, music never gave me money, boss. <laughs> I made my money okay, I made some money in the concert, but then um, there are other things that I've done, I mean, and, but I realized that I mean, agriculture was one thing that I really wanted to hope to, like, you know, uh, make a great, uh, this thing, I want to make $200,000 a year out of agriculture, but not possible, not under the circumstances, it is not, um, uh, there's still a long way to go, you know, I think we got to kind of reverse, just step back and go back and this thing. And for me, uh, I've made money through acting or directing uh, something, being an assistant. I've cleaned carpets. I've picked up horse dung. And uh, these are all experiences. So it's not, um, uh, I mean, my father had horses, right? So uh, he sent me for training to the United States, and that's what I was doing there, you know, cleaning out stables. And my father owns 150 horses, like, you know, so. But, yeah. So, uh, my question is regarding stress management. Everybody. I spoke too. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, I know. Uh, I do not know what it is, but um, I find that amongst people who uh, generally are found a different, uh, you know, meaning or a different tune that they sing, um, uh, who made a difference to my life, generally. 
were, were people who have uh, experimented at some point with marijuana. And I do not believe um, uh, marijuana is a drug. I believe it is something for therapy. In America, they are giving it to cancer patients. People are probably going, stressing out or whatever. And anyways, in India, it's been part of the tradition here. I mean, about 15 years ago in Goregaon, there used to be Pansari legally selling you stuff. So, I mean, what's the big, uh, this thing? Everybody can have a drink and say, man, it's cool like that. But it's not cool to have a smoke. I mean, I think cool to have a smoke. Was it more successful? Was it more satisfying to do a Palakar Pina or Osara? Pasala? Osara. Of course, I mean, uh, Iqbal Kajina was more of a stress thing for me because, uh, yeah, my father had given Rajesh Roshan a break and Rithik Roshan happened to be Rajesh Roshan in particular. So it was his first film. So like, and I decided that, boss, I am not doing cinema. I told my pop, like, you know, dad, you know, I mean, music for me is this. And he said, beta, you know, you must do this. Like, it is disrespectful if you, whatever. Of a family relation, and out of a family relation, I went and um, uh, this thing, and I had to do the same thing with Chindu Kapoor son. You know, it's, and it's not business there, it's like you do it because, and just those songs that you're not paid for make you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, 
because it's going to have my what do you call uh, what do you call uh, uh, what do you call uh, the final if you want to call it. Will it be free on the internet as well? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. One of our strategies of marketing uh, this thing is to let people have um, uh, what do you call me have an outlet like for a month or whatever. The environment around should get a you should know who you are, what you're this thing which you try, you know. So there would be that. So, you, so that's being responsible again, as I say. It's not about, and then uh, being true to their need. You know, at the end of the day, uh, whether they would really like it for the effort that you put. It should, it should be what you're saying it is. You know, and that's what we are aiming to do and bring it across the time. Well, that's what uh, every uh, restaurant or all the food critique, you know, they, they definitely want to. Uh, that would be best, uh, especially in the food and the services. But what's going to be your USP here? How are you going to be different? Will be, it will be something, you know, put some extra USPs to that? Will be, yeah. No, we keep it simple. We just tell it for what it is. This is what it is. And I mean, you're not going to be, um, uh, what do you call it? The food is not going to misrepresent itself. And what we're telling you is that that's what it is. We are doing the the, the way I look at it, we are we are marketing this at recession prices <laughs> because there is a recession coming. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our strategy that you should be able to afford food that you can afford the same time then, even now, because and it should be true to what it's telling you it is. You know? That's what.
I mean, he was an early educated man from New Zealand. He invented, um, uh, you know, that thing on the radio that goes like, like oh. yeah. So, uh, and these are uneducated people. I mean, there are instances where you have geniuses uh, and you don't need something to contain them. They have so much to give out anyways. Was Tesla educated? Nikolai Tesla. Does anybody know whether Nikolai Tesla was educated? Or what his qualifications were? Music and Then yeah, there you have and you have Beethoven who was deaf at some point in uh, this thing, you know? So uh, there's space and you just gotta find your rhythm. Once you find your rhythm, that's it. You will enjoy everything, you will be here and you will be disattached. I am a typical example of what you call a middle class person getting into the music industry and getting out uh, without knowing what to do actually. Uh, but that's the second thing. But uh, the thing is that the direct music scenario... I hope you didn't find what I said insulting. It wasn't no, it's not that. No, what I mean is that I was a typical boy, I am a typical person, what you said when you who, uh, who uh, I, mean, I am a singer basically, but coming from a middle class family, meaning getting into the, meaning instead of getting into the musical, uh, meaning uh, search for that, got into some uh, opportunity. But then unable to proceed further because of a lot of complications that are because of that actually. And then uh, probably not doing anything now in that category. But the important thing is that actually uh, in the current music scenario, uh, I don't know about really about the album meaning in terms of uh, uh, what's happening in, in the Hindi industry actually. But then generally uh, from the south, uh, meaning uh, albums are not so famous as uh, getting into your, I mean, the only option is getting into the senior music industry. Uh, but now the problem is, uh, uh, when you get into a studio and uh, do a recording, nowadays it's not a live recording anyway, and things are like you record even by words actually, not even by sentences. In that way, when we proceed, meaning would the music industry can sustain or can we groom leaders, meaning the music, meaning the capable music people, meaning because the old songs are still living because of the uh, uh, the capabilities and the, of the singers and the, they, they can proceed in that way actually. But now with the, with the emergence of technology and all those things. We have come to a place where, okay, the sound is meaning uh, overruling the singers, and then also singers are singing word by word, not even by sentences. I do that sometimes. Uh -huh. Yeah, I am a geek. Um, if the song is too difficult, if it's not my genre, I can't sing that high. I can't sing it in one way. If you see the song, most of most of the songs are basically cut and paste. In the it's not like you take a guitar and you sing a song like a ballad. That you do in one take. But when you have things that are coming from here and coming from there, how do you humanly sing that? The taste of the people that has, you know, they want to hear that crazy sound and then you have songs like Hey, up the hair, and you're singing on very as though you're about to strangle someone or <laughs> You understand what So that's basically how, um, that's just temporal again as I said. It's not a life, it was a very good thing. And that's what people are trying to market, to make money off of, you know, monetize that. I don't believe that stays for too long. I do it because, okay, TK, sometimes, like I have a friend, or um, uh, like Vishal is a good person, and uh, I do it. But it's not my career, it's not something that I go and, and I do it because, okay, TK, sometimes, like I have a friend, or um, uh, like Vishal is a good person, and uh, I do it. But it's not my career, it's not something that I want to go and do like how Rafisa did, or how Kishore did, because when they did it, Along with them, there were 250 musicians, you know, there was a violin section, there was a this section, there was that section. So everybody was in unison at one time. So it became part of how they sang, you know, and the song became the song, with the music, everything was live and recorded live. But in today's day, where do you have that, um, where do you have the 90 violinists or, you understand, it's not possible. Times have changed, technology has changed. And um, people want, it's become a thing about money because music companies are calling the shop. Hey man, you don't need 20 violinists. You can do that with, you know, Vienna sound music, you know, kind of. So, I understand totally, but that's the state of how the music is. Can you share the top three learnings from life? <laughs> sure. <laughs> My dad. I think he was a great teacher of life. My father, uh, 
never allowed me to uh, basically step beyond what he thought, what he felt was not good enough for me, I mean, not good for me. Like for example, we weren't allowed to live in the film industry. We were film people, but we were always kept far away. If he was a horseman, you know, kept us far away from the people. Those were things that he did. And um, what he maintained was that this is what I do. Once I came to my dad, I said, you know, uh, dad, like I'm like you know, getting this career thing, and you know, like how about giving me a poet? You know, he had a poet. The only one in India at that time. Even now, there's no Kali And he says, uh, but I've given it to Abba son. I said, but I'm your, I'm your son. I'm who's Abba? He says, you didn't earn it, so don't even talk about it. You have the money, go out, go buy your car, come mm -hmm. home, and you know, then show off about Whatever you want, it's not necessary for me to give you because you've not earned it. I can do with my stuff. Whatever. So basically, got you down to ground, you know, stay on ground level, don't fly. You know what is. The second one would be when I lost both my, my brother and my father. You know, it was just life changing for me. I decided that my. I did this for them, you know, like what I mean to uh, to be something in my father. You know, my father was truly immolate. He was big. I mean, he was this big star, and but he had hope in me, and uh, I'm glad that for me it was. He saw my success before he died. But when it changed, you know, I mean, then there was no reason to. Uh, and for me, fortunately, at that time, the music industry also went to hell, you know, uh, because. It, I didn't want to sing, I didn't want to like go out and do this, but yet at the same time I wanted to make music, I wanted to do the stuff and I didn't want to like go with music companies and I just found that lack of emotion, that lack of, it was directionless for me, so I had to find my own way. So, anyway, we did whatever we did and we reached whatever we reached. Um, and uh, I think growing up is an experience by itself and I mean, uh, face the challenges, you know, nothing is really good, nothing is really bad, these are challenges that we face, so it's how we perceive them, it's how we meet them, and uh, which teaches you or uh, breaks you, or whatever. What do you want Lucky to remember us? I don't want to be remembered as Lucky. <laughs> I don't want to be remembered in fact, I mean, I don't want to be like, I mean, that's so boring. I mean, I see um, poor Mao. Uh, I don't know that anybody in <laughs> You know, Bal Thakre, he's put his father's statue there with his one finger up there. You know? And all you see is pigeon shit on his head. <laughs> you understand what I mean? So, if that's what it is to become, I don't want that. You know, I mean, uh, with due respects. Changes the growth that has happened. You know, uh, I have 
And for me, being a part of a, a Hollywood project was, you know, actually the factor that got me to do that. To see how things really operate out there. They're no different than us, but they're more organized, of course. But it's the same old thing. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, it's magic time. And when that happens, then, you know. So why don't we see more of you in movies? The <laughs> um, a, a reason being, um, um, I like to live away from the film industry. Uh, in the sense, I like to live in Bangalore. I am from Bangalore. Uh, when you're not there in front and promoting yourself, I would like to promote the other things that I want to do. You know, like I want to promote this food thing that I'm doing. I want to promote this agriculture. Sky farms. I want to promote sky farms. We discussed sky farms. That, uh, and uh, what sky farms is, let me tell you. It's about every building having an area which grew its own vegetables. You know, a wall that was only there for, so it takes care of the society and all the people that are living there. The surplus of that would then go to the market. That's a concept that we have. Um, I like promotion of those things. By God's grace, I've had promotion in this. I mean, it's, as, as I said, it's quite lonely being that because it's not that at the end of the day. Sir, uh, sir uh, you have been a hero to me. I mean, you are both sort of helping me like a, you know, love anthem. <laughs> so, when you write and when you sing, what's the kind of message that you try to convey to your audience? Very importantly, um, for me, I'm very conscious about the fact that uh, I'm answerable. You know, in a sense, like I should not uh, step beyond the boundary of uh, my understanding of it. And um, when you say responsible, uh, if you feel responsibility towards um, whatever you uh, uh, just think. Uh, Whatever makes your makes you tick. And it comes across in your song. It comes across in um, uh, your lyric, in your music. And if you're really feeling truly about it, you know, it comes across that people like it. If you like it, then people do. You know, uh, you have to feel true. <coughs> I don't depend on any feedback. I mean, of course, I um, I did a very bad concert in Hyderabad a few days ago. So I, I mean, I depended on that feedback. Man, you messed up. You know, <laughs> that's important. Sure. Does anyone have a guitar? I think you do have a guitar. <laughs>
कहीं से तुझे आई है सदा लौट के आए आशियाना मेरा भी आशियाना तू अंजा मेरा मे तू क्या ढूंढता तेरे दूर जिसको समझा वो तो पास है तेरे